All right, so we have these kind of different measurements of the orbit of an object because of its non-circular nature. And so here we're looking at the inclination, that is how angled it is relative to the uh, plane of our solar system. Yeah, so each circle here is a currently known Kuiper belt object, trans Neptunian object. And on this axis, we're plotting how far out they are from the sun, we're plotting the semi-major axis, which okay. is like the average distance from the sun. So this is 30 astronomical units, so that's where Neptune is. 20 down here would be where Uranus is. And then it goes 40, 50, 100, 200, 300, 400, and so on out there. And up here we're plotting the inclination. So something inclination zero. So essentially Neptune is like here. Yes, so something that goes around the same place as all the planets is going to be down here. And here you can see all the different uh, trans Neptunian objects. There's Pluto, there's Eris, um, Haumea, mean, Maki Maki, Gong Gong. So there's, so there's a bunch of them. I mean, some of these at 60 degrees are pretty... Not, they're not doing this to the solar system, but they're doing this really inclined orbit. Yes, there's a lot of, lot of patterns here. Yeah. And so one pattern is clearly they're pretty much inclined. Yeah. We saw that Pluto was inclined, and we see that that's actually very typical. I mean, Eris is a lot more inclined than Pluto. Haumea a little bit more. There are some that are less, some that are more. But in general, they're not all sitting in the same plane they're inclined, they're up and down. Yeah. And we saw this before. I was going to say, this reminds me a lot of the asteroid belt, to be honest. That's right. The asteroid belt was also a range of inclinations um, that wasn't quite as much as this. I mean, this one goes up to 40, 50 degrees. The asteroid belt was more like 30, 30 degrees. degrees. Yeah. Uh, but it's certainly a big range. And there's something else here that's reminiscent of the asteroid belt. There seems to be these kind of vertical lines with these gaps. Right? I mean, because there's a lot of these red ones, there's a lot of these blue ones, and then there's like nothing in between. Yeah, and these, remember the asteroid belt, there were gaps yep. which were in resonances with Jupiter. Okay. So, for example, 3 to 2, 4 to 1, or whatever it might be, integer, because yep. then the, the orbits would affect each other and, and pull them out of the orbit. And here, again, we've got resonances. And now, for example, this is the 3 to 2 resonance with Neptune. So, oh, so instead of Jupiter being in resonance, it's now Neptune being in resonance? Yep. And so there's a whole bunch of objects, including Pluto, that go round precisely two times every three times Neptune goes round. Interesting. Not 3.01, not 2.99. 3.00. Yes. And just like we talked about for the asteroid belt, this is that they're actually locked into the resonance. And the asteroid belt tend to be these resonances were avoided. Yes. Because something that was in there tended to get scattered out That's in some right. other orbit. But here they tend to be popular. And basically, this means that Pluto is never going to get near Neptune. Ah, uh, so... Because this is always something I always wondered, right? It was this, it came closer sometimes in Neptune, and it was inclined. People always wonder, is it ever going to crash? Well, first of all, we saw that it's tilted, that's so right, it actually exactly. never comes that yes, close. that's right. Uh, but it's it, also the fact that it's got the exact resonance. It's just a careful dance. But let's say you were trying to avoid someone on campus. Yes. It's a lot easier if you know their timetable. Because <laughs> you can always be at another building when they're leaving that building and do the switcheroo. And that's what Pluto and in fact, all these objects in this huge thing here, they've got an orbit that means they never go near Neptune. Ah, so they know where Neptune's going to be, and they're always someone else at that particular time. Interesting. OK. All right. And you can see a whole bunch of these vertical lines, and it seems that a large fraction of the trans Neptunian objects are in resonances with Neptune. Interesting, okay. Um, we can also look at the, and we're now putting the eccentricity. So if again, you remember, zero yeah. is a perfect circle, so that's where the, all, most of the planets are, and one is incredibly elongated. But there's actually a few of these that are really eccentric. Yep. So now we're seeing this line along here, which is the things in resonance with yep. Neptune. Um, and we can see, yes, uh, it's about 0.3 for Pluto, but there are some Eris's up around, you know, more than 0.4. So these things are in very eccentric orbits. That's right. As well as very inclined orbits. And again, that's pretty much what we saw for the asteroid belt. Yeah. And again, if you look at the mass of these things, the mass of all the, tra I mean, a lot of trans Neptunian objects, yeah. even if you add them all up, it's only you know, maybe 3% the mass of the Earth. I mean, given, as you said, if, if Pluto and Aries are some of the bigger ones, and they're only 1% of that of the Earth, they're not going to be that much. Yeah, so this whole problem about there being, a, there's a gap of mass in the asteroid belt and a gap of mass out here as well, that doesn't go away. There's a lot of things out there, but they don't add up to very much. And there's still a problem. And we saw for the asteroid belt, we had an explanation. Yes. The idea was that we were um, having planets that migrated. In the case of the asteroid belt, it was the Graham-Tack model, right. where Jupiter 
is thought to have moved in and then locked into resonance of Saturn and moved out again. And as it moved, it set up. It moved because it was embedded in this disk. Yep. It wouldn't move nowadays, but back then there was a disk around it and it set up ripples in the disk, which caused it to move in and out in rather complicated ways. And it's thought that as it moved through the asteroid belt, its resonance has swept through it and got rid of most of the asteroids, pulled them out so they fall into a planet somewhere. Exactly. So essentially kind of ate them up or spat them out. And the ones that weren't eaten or spat up tend to end up in very elliptical and very yeah. Inclined orbits. So, is this what's happened with Neptune and the That's the idea. I mean, that's not uh, Jupiter, it's Uranus and Neptune. Okay. It's actually quite hard in the models to form them as far out as they currently exist. Yeah. Um, so, most likely, people think that Uranus and Neptune originally formed closer in mm -hmm. and migrated out. And so, that as they migrated out, they push this other stuff out? As they migrated out, their resonances would have swept yep. through and a large number of the trans neptune objects would have been flung out in different orbits. Uh, some of them would have got flung further out where they end up as forming the comet belt, we'll talk about yep. in the next lesson. Um, or some of them would have come flung in and been eaten by Jupiter, Saturn or Uranus and Neptune. So some fraction of the mass and these planets is probably the mass that was originally further out and got scattered up as they moved. Okay. This is called the Nice model after the city in France, yeah. written nice but pronounced Nice. Um, and this model explains, as, as the resonance has moved through, that explains why the Kuiper Belt the are scattered. They're in the elliptical orbits. Yep. They probably started off in nice circular orbits. These are probably just the normal lumps of protoplanetary material. Because they were so far out, there would have been ice lumps That's rather than right. rock lumps. And most of them got removed, and then a few that are left got scattered and puffed up and moved into funny patterns. So it seems to be that the mechanism and the, the dynamics for creating the asteroid belt is probably the exact same for creating the Kuiper belt. Yes, that seems to be the current idea.